to the left of the screen, we can see the uh, guy in plaid. We can also confirm it's him. He's wearing a mask. And he's following a group of about eight masked protesters. These protesters are now crossing the street. And what we find uh, throughout the whole stream is that dude in plaid is always following the same eight or so black block. So here we have the video shot by a CTV camera dude. And this is what Ian Lafreniere of the Montreal police argues that uh, we're not talking about. We're not talking about the fact that the cops were attacked by protesters. Many protesters argue that dude with the flare gun acted very militarized as if he had training for this uh, for this style of shooting and maneuver he pulled out right there in front of the cops this is also where the cop car window got smashed and here we can see the protesters running southbound it's interesting that the black block of undercovers went northbound on wolf when the head of the protest actually went south Here's the confrontation, and to the right of the screen, we see one of the guys in black running across. And it appears that CTV we know is on the middle of the screen, on the other side of the street, filming this. And um, the black block seems to stay right next to the camera dudes, which is very strange for a black block. Here we just saw the cop trip over the uh, cone. So here to the left of the screen, we can see a group of people which are again the eight or so black block. Here we can see a group of uh, black block in front of the camera that crossed the street. They gather and meet up with the other group of black block and they go up wolf. So here we see a dude on the floor, but the bike cops are preventing us from getting any closer. There's two masked men on top of a dude that's on the floor. So we have to cross the street, and now we can see two masked men more or less beating on a dude. In some of the pictures, we can see the feet moving in a way that appears to be kicks. Now the bike cops are protecting the commotion that's happening there. They're pretty much allowing these two undercovers to be beating up on a citizen. Initial reports were that the two masked men beating up on the citizen were not protesters but cops and uh, at that point once we realize they're most likely undercovers the bike cops are pushing us away from the commotion again we can see one of the guys here regrouping with the third black block as the witness report this is where the citizen got robbed of his wallet and his bag the two men in black took the bag up a staircase, which is later the Katie incident. So here we had to go around uh, by Plessy. And we're now on uh, Logan near Maisonneuve, where the uh, so-called kettle is forming. I didn't want to get any closer because there was a lot of tension in the uh, police officers on the ground. And from what I could see is bike cops jumping off their bikes to tackle protesters. This is where we can hear the screams of uh, Katie's incident. This is also where the uh, initial reports are of the staircase. So at the time I called it as three arrests because I could count three piles of bike cops jumping off their bikes to tackle three different groups or individuals. Turns out there was eight arrests on that corner. Here we're trying to figure out what chopper is in the sky. Is it a uh, police helicopter or is it a mainstream helicopter? We later find out and realize that the SPVM has no helicopter, so it was the SQ. Especially since we eventually noticed that the chopper was really following a particular group of people who in turn we figured out later was the black block of undercover cops, about eight or so of them. 
Robocop qui est remplacé par des poussins. So here we've got about a group of uh, less than 10 protesters that are walking away. Initially, they were followed by uh, riot cops who got replaced by uh, bike cops. On est au coin de Maison Neuve et quoi ça? So here we're at the corner of Maison Neuve and Panet. And we're walking uh, westbound towards Berry on Maison Neuve. And here the cops decide to go to the left, take the left sidewalk where there is a crowd of uh, masked men all wearing black. We count them as being eight of them. And this is where the bike cops takes a distance and they disappear, leaving the group of eight to walk away. They're still wearing their masks. And this is when, as a group, we realize that they're the same so the word eight that or that so right that we saw that earlier that cover. we thought were a group of and black bloc. What was interesting when we crossed them earlier is that they didn't say uh, hi comrades or nothing. They didn't have no flags. They really didn't fit the typical black bloc that we see in these protests. And this group of protesters I was with is a uh, close-knit community. So it was surprising to see that nobody of the real protesters recognized these dudes in black. And this is about where they realize they're being followed. They uh, start removing their masks and they pull out a cell phone to make calls. And uh, when we saw them earlier, what was really strange about them is that they were all built like construction dudes and their way of walking didn't fit. It was very militarized. This is also where we identify the uh, dude in uh, plaid and we're realizing that he's always following them. I'm filming. <laughs> Here they're not sure what to do anymore. They're not sure if they should continue walking or not because they're realizing that we're following them. And what we're interested in seeing is how are the cops going to deal with this group of black bloc that were still wearing their masks. Now at this point they did remove their masks and we believe it's because of the uh, crowd of people that was on the other corner. It would have been uh, too suspicious for them to keep on walking towards Barry all in mask. Here the group of black bloc turns right on uh, Wolf Alors, from Maison uh, Neuve. So this is the second time Wolf. that same group of masked men use Wolf as a shortcut. Here we've got the group of eight uh, undercovers to our right that are pretty much uh, using this parking lot alley entrance to, uh, to hide.
And here we're also realizing that there's no more bike cops that are following us. And we're debating as to whether or not we're legally allowed to follow undercovers. To which I say definitely there's no law preventing us from uh, denouncing the fact that this is a group of undercovers. Some of the protesters had with them walkie-talkies, so they're as well calling in for backup. And I'm stating on the live stream that we believe this is a group of undercovers on the corner of Maisonneuve and Wolf. Provocateur style. And here we have the sergeant who just drives by, and as he drives by, his communications lag my stream for a few frames. And what I personally saw of the uh, passenger in the uh, sergeant's minivan, his face <laughs> dropped like somebody's face, facial expression to like, holy shit. They're stuck. So his face totally dropped. And here we've got four minivans following a uh, bus of uh, riot cops. They could have taken a right on Wolf from Maisonneuve and be right there. But instead, they turn their emergency lights and they take a right from Maisonneuve. And that's really strange because they could have taken a right from right there on the corner of Maisonneuve and Wolf, but instead they go against traffic because Wolf is a one way. So they go against traffic and they stop right next to the group of Black Bloc. And we're waiting to see how are the cops going to handle this. Normally, the riot cops they're out of their bus they should be now hitting their batons on their shields but instead what they do is they go nicely and ask these dudes in black to circulate they make a line and they push these pro these so-called protesters that we are now calling under covers they push them back into the group of real protesters and this is where we follow them all the way to Barry. So along the way uh, west of Maisonneuve, we make it to Barry. Not all of the protesters decided to follow the undercovers, but uh, some protesters left. Others started following with us. And uh, what happens here is that the uh, group of eight undercovers, they cut diagonally through Barry Square towards the entrance of the metro. And this is where we uh, meet up with other protesters who ask us if we saw what happened. This is when we hear about the fact that one of the undercovers uh, pulled out a gun and pulled out a knife. And uh, the witness is telling us that they threatened to shoot, threatened these uh, protesters with a gun. And uh, as we're now realizing that this really is heavier than we thought, we run after them. Perhaps not the best choice, but uh, that is what we do. Now, to my interpretation is that the group split off and majority of them went into the metro. So I start asking people if they saw anybody going into the metro with their masks. But turns out they had actually removed their uh, masks a while ago on uh, Maisonneuve to, uh, not to cause this much attention to themselves. So here we're regrouping with a couple of uh, independent media, pretty much sharing uh, what we know about these undercovers. And uh, we're being told that some of them are still with the uh, communists. So we go and see the, uh, the crowd that's on the other side of uh, Barry Square.
Okay, so here we've got a witness that tells me uh, that the undercovers that were on Maison Neuve beating up on a dude who drew a gun is actually right there in the square. So we're now debating as to whether or not we go and confront these undercovers, how do we go about this, and whatnot. Some of these uh, protesters are saying, well, if they're not undercovers, let's go and recruit them. So here I'm telling some of the protesters about the gun and the knife. Some had heard about the gun prior to me arriving, but not the knife. So here a group of uh, protesters are going to confront these uh, so-called undercovers. Protesters are yelling at cab. And this is the uh, dude that's later seen uh, in some of the pictures. So the protesters that were claiming these are, uh, these two sitting there were with them were correct. Oh, pepper spray. And here we have uh, the undercovers. Undercover cops, provocateurs. They are spraying uh, Frédéric and another protester with some uh, pepper spray. Here we've got a riot cop pushing Fred away from these undercovers. Undercover! Now, of course, the crowd is yelling undercover. And here we have the riot cops that are pretty much forming a line. And they're making a separation from the real protesters to the undercovers. A bunch of cop cars come swarming into uh, Berry Square. And uh, protesters are calling out for uh, Malox to help the two that got pepper sprayed. So here we see the uh, dude with a hat and a couple of the undercovers. They're lingering around the riot bus, riot uh, squad. And this is where they cross the street to eventually make the arrest that got uh, captured on picture of uh, Simon. And here we have the riot cops that are now hitting on their batons and uh, pushing back the real protesters away. So what we noticed throughout the stream is that whenever the uh, undercovers are mingled within the protesters, the riot cops are really nice and they make a separation. Once the uh, undercovers are separated, then the riot cops come out rushing, charging, hitting their batons. And at this point, we're simply trying to observe what's happening. People are pointing out that the undercovers are across the street. And here's the line of riot cops that is pushing us away from the scene of the incident and here we can see Fred uh, being helped by protesters because he's being uh, he's actually blinded by the pepper spray and here we've got another line of riot cops that is protecting the Barry Square And here's a video shot by Kevin Moore on the uh, night of the protest. 
And this is a good example of uh, how the SPVM riot cops treat independent photographers that are stuck in between a uh, line of protesters that's running away from the riot cops. They don't want you to film.